Divya Datta, wonderful to see you. And as usual, might I add, you've knocked it out of the park like you always do with Hostages Season 2. Most important question, how are you and the family uh, during this pandemic? Are you safe and healthy? Thank God. Uh, yeah, we are all safe. My brother's a doctor, so um, yes, I mean, he goes and then I go for my work as well as you all do a little bit. But yes, everyone's such good call for it. Thanks. Ayesha Khan is, is quite an interesting character, but uh, there really isn't a backstory if you look at it. You know, if you go in a chronological order, uh, you know, it just cold starts with her flirting with a guy in a bar, which is Ayaz's character. And, you know, suddenly a phone call happens and boom, she's into the, into the thick of action. Do you worry about that when a, when a part comes to you? Do you work on that backstory with your directors? Or are you just as good as the lines, you know, because you're such a fabulous actress and you say, you know, forget the backstory, let's just go with it. Talk to me about that process. Interesting, Rishi. No, uh, there has to be a backstory for, for, for sure because you need to connect to the character as a person and not just as the lines she speaks. But I need to know who she is. And if I only found Aisha at work, I wouldn't really know who she is. Now I know she's a single woman trying to date, vulnerable somewhere, and um, somewhere childlike, and yet a tough taskmaster. So that kind of adds a lot of layers to the whole role, and that, that I think is the X factor. So you really need to know what's happening with her uh, prior to when you see her, and what's going to happen to her when she goes. So there has to be a certain graph that comes by. I, I was uh, quite stunned uh, why I mean uh, uh, there are so many layers to this character is you know that she is uh, dealing with this whole patri patriarchal situation uh, your character with Sachin Khurana's characters at loggerheads and then you know that the other Jat officer who replaces Sachin Khurana for a while he comes in I don't know the name of the actor and you know there's a conflict situation here but she's also reaching out to people for advice, which means she's actually quite an open kind of person who, despite uh, being at loggerheads, can actually, you know, just calm down and say, what is your opinion? And you must have found that very interesting. That's really interesting because uh, rather than, I would say, being open, she likes to take the other person's perspective as well so that her job becomes easier. She's pretty shrewd and smart in what she wants. And sometimes if she feels she's lagging in something or she's lacking in something, she would want to know the other person's uh, way of thinking so she can approach her work in a better way. So I think that was very interesting. Very interesting indeed. I had no clue there was a, a, a something called a hostage uh, negotiator at all. <laughs> You know, that to me itself was like, wow, you know, does this happen? I mean, you've seen it in Hollywood and Indian cinema where one person negotiates, but you always think that they're part of the team, you know, whoever the commandos are. Did you, were you aware of that before you signed Hostages 2? Were you aware that, and if so, then how did you go about finding out more about what they do? I honestly wasn't too aware of uh, there being a, a hostage negotiator, uh, especially a female one. But I think it added a lot of, um, what do you say, depth to the entire thing because in the scenario of all the men right, being right there, there comes a petite woman who wants to just gauge what the other party is thinking, come to her own conclusions, get her way in spite of all the oppositions. I think it was very interesting and to just get those nuances of every tone, every silence, everything that's thrown at her. She, she just uh, picks it up and she observes it and she just knows what she, uh, what, what's coming next. And that I found very intriguing. In fact, I was watching it with my brother who's such a mass audience and he says, Iske samne mat karo, ye pakar legi. So I was like, <laughs> so that was the impact of, of um, you know, a role on, on somebody who's totally goes out in, in a series like that. So um, I was thoroughly enjoying the response because I saw with six, seven people at home. I got everyone to watch it together. So it felt like, yes, I mean, a group watching it. So you get every response. And to Aisha, it was very interesting and something they hadn't seen before. So yes, it was fun. So tell, tell me how you signed this part. I mean, uh, did Sudhir have anything to do with it? I find him quite an interesting character with his long hair and his swag and, you know, walking into a room and taking over things like that. <laughs> Which I think is cool in a lot of ways. So and he's talk such to me a about that. Otherwise, he's adorably <laughs> cute, absolutely, and a very, I mean, one of the most knowledgeable yeah. men that I know, and a very intelligent one at that. And uh, I've been meaning to work with him forever. 
in fact, we came very close to working together in a film, but my dates didn't work out. So that just uh, went off. And uh, so when I saw Hostages season one, Rishi, I was like, Are, kitna hai. I, I should have been a part of this. You know, as an actor, you always think, you know, greedy actors, like, okay, I want to do, I should have done this. And then I let it be just like that. And then I met Sudhir at a party. Uh, and uh, so we were just chatting random here and there and suddenly abruptly he said and why are you not a part of hostages too I said you're making hostages too he says yes and uh, there's a role you have to do and then he just took me to meet Samir Nair who was right there uh, at the party itself and then uh, it just happened so I think when you just send some good vibes to the universe it all just conspires well and it just makes it happen so everyone was there the producer the director the actor and it just happened and I really wanted to work with both of them and the role when I heard was, yes, I mean, there was no way I wouldn't do it. It's just fabulous. Uh, it's a well-known fact that character, strong, good character act, actors like yourself are often busier than the biggest heroes and heroines. I mean, that's the way it has always been. You know, you look at, uh, you know, Dilip Kumar Saab's time, uh, more recently, Shah Rukh's time, after that, Hrithik's time. Uh, the, the character artists, artists are always more busy. You know, you're moving from one set to another, this, that. And obviously in this day and age with OTT coming into play, you must be getting lots and lots and lots of parts. Um, how do you decide what you're going to do? Is it always script based or is it sometimes banner based or is it, hey, you know, I've got so many lines vis-a-vis -vis that many lines or is it a combination of all those factors talk to me about that Rishi first of all I have a huge issue about being called a character actor I think I'm an actor I don't like to be fair enough correct if you're not calling me a heroine then don't call me a character actor I mean I'm not interested in being called a heroine not at all but I'm saying why do you call me a character actor I I am a, I'm a complete actor who's uh, who's doing every kind of role possible even your so-called leads so what happens, you had actors like that earlier as well, but we, we are, I think, too much enough of in a hurry to give somebody an image. Um, I mean, we, we had actors like Sanjeev Kumar, we had actors like Balrat Sani, who played heroes, who played fathers to the same heroines they romanced, and then they again played uh, heroes to the same girls. They were never stamped as being character actors. They, they, were, they were actors. I've never heard them being called, um, you know, so and so. Actors, I, I think that's nice. And especially, I think, with women, the, the kind of, um, I think I'm in a strange kind of a place where nobody knows how to kind of, what do you romance this hero. This is not a typical character role. This is what do you want to say? It's fine. But I think I would like to be called an actor. First of all, because I do think men uh, who do my kind of roles are called actors. I've never heard them being called character actors and they are doing every kind of role. I'm doing every kind of role. In fact, my forthcoming ones, including hostages, is a lead role. So you can't call me a character actor there just because it's an OTT. I mean, Ram Singh Charlie, I am the lead. The next movies that I'm coming in are the so-called leads. Not that it kind of affects me. For me, what matters is uh, the, the interesting part of the role. Mm. I mean, how much are you taking me back with you? In fact, I've left the so-called so many lead roles and taken the other part because I thought that was more intriguing, more interesting. Wow. Uh, I, I think I need to be satiated as an actor, Rishi. That's what matters. And to answer so your length, question, length does not matter. What is what you're saying? It never does. You can be in the film throughout and do nothing to me. Uh, and, and I couldn't just say, wo jo aaya tha, wo char scene mein aaya tha, maza aaya aaya. I took that. And, and I think I did. I started that way with, with the commercial films, so to say, um, with Veer Zara and all. Yeah. I wasn't there throughout the film, but people still remember me. So um, uh, I'm saying, I think I've had an unconventional career and I have made some interesting choices. And uh, for me, the criteria of selecting always is um, an entirety of something. It's an instant yes or an instant no always. I never take like 10 days, ke madam script padengi, phir batayengi, yes, I need to <laughs> So uh, it's first of all the director. That is for me the biggest uh, attraction. Uh, there, are, there are loads of good directors out there I really want to work with. And this year I did. I worked with some of my very favorite ones, Sriya uh, Neeraj Pandey, then uh, Debakar Banerjee, 
then Umesh Shukla, uh, the, the, an, Anubhav Sinha. I worked with so many of them this year. Um, so uh, for, for me, first and foremost is that because I think they, those are the ones who present you. Those are the ones who give you a certain perception that the people will take back home. And secondly, of course, my role and who is with me, that comes secondary. Uh, but uh, yes, I mean, these two things for sure. Well, the, the thriller uh, genre, the thriller espionage kind of genre, I mean, you've, you've, you've seen two of them back to back now with you in it, uh, Special Ops and this one. Yes. What does it for you in that? You know, for some people, it'll be like everybody is uh, could be the murderer or everybody could be the, the guilty party. For others, it's the twists and the turns. When you're watching an espionage thriller, what is it that really sucks you in about that? First of all, I've bitten all my nails watching watching uh, <laughs> one of these. I remember I was watching Neeraj's uh, baby and we'd yeah. gone for a preview and uh, I had my freshly manicured nails and they were all gone. I said, first pay me the money for killing my nails. But uh, I think it's always what happens next because it's so taut, it is so gripping, it is so interesting that um, uh, you're on the literally on the edge of the seat like i uh, i being petite can just sit up on the seat like and uh, squat my legs and just sit and be like this and watch and the sheer excitement of where the characters are going and where they're taking the story and what happens next and of course those twists that come in and with special ops i was the twist so um so it felt nice that hey for a change i knew what's going to happen next but i had told Neeraj also specifically i said don't tell me the story let me enjoy it as an actor and as an audience so he didn't tell me the story just my role that's it so you know, actors can never question why if their particular character is is uh, a victim of a vice they've got to go ahead with it Aisha Khan is a chain smoker she's constantly in in corners in the in the hostage area or outside puffing away so how do you manage that I mean do you do you do you fake smoke do you take a couple of puffs put it put it aside couldn't be easy because you know every every second scene when you're not speaking in front of the the uh, communication system you're out having most smoke. of the time rishi yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no i'm speaking uh, uh, there are so i'm just i'm, just, I'm getting into the mecha mechanics of it the logistics <laughs> of it how do you manage <laughs> i have actually smoked in a lot of films and thankfully i haven't been uh, really gotten used to it uh, but um, uh, Sometimes, you know, the, for a shot, you have to like really do it a, a few times. And um, I'm somebody whose capacity is very low uh, with, with anything. So I remember in Dilli Che when I was uh, using the babies, I didn't know, I, very naive I was, I didn't know that they're more potent than the cigarettes. <laughs> so I was like, hey. And Patak, I went down, I was literally zoomed out and they had to just get me and they got uh, the other babies made without any stuff in it. And uh, so now, of course, I mean, with time you've learned and um, I've, earlier I didn't know how to even inhale. So it looked very fake. But things like these look fake on the, um, if, if you're faking it, you're caught. Yep. You so, so yes, I mean, you do it. That's fine. Part of my being an actor. That's, that's cool. The last time I interviewed you, there was a, my favorite part of the interview was you talking about this beautiful book that, uh, that you'd written about your mother, you know. Yeah. Are you doing any more writing or do you, do you have, do you don't not have any time to do it? Tell me. No, Rishi, it's taking a lot of my time writing my next, in fact. Uh, so that is, um, yes, being written right now during the lockdown and now, whenever I get time, I'm finishing one chapter each every day. Uh, yes, uh, my next is on uh, for next year. And uh, the Hindi version of the previous one also is ready. Uh, so that also comes by. So, yes. Is it a spoiler if you tell us what the next one is about? Yeah. It's going to be um, a lot of my film journey. So intriguing parts. I mean, I, I just see in interviews everywhere, people want to know um, the journey and everything. And so it's, it's, I mean, I can't tell you what it is about, sure. but it is about my journey in the movies. And that requires a different kind of discipline, doesn't it? I mean, you've got to sit, put pen to paper or put finger to keyboard for fixed number of hours every day. That's what writer friends tell me. You know, it's not like a man kiya to lik liya types. So are you using that philosophy? Because you're not technically a full-time writer. You can use that philosophy. Or are you doing that discipline of, of, of writing of so many characters or words every day? 
I was doing it, but I think the lockdown did a strange thing to all of us somewhere, Rishi. Somewhere, you know, you're not just focused to one thing. There are 10 things going on in your head. There's a certain kind of anxiety with what's happening in the world. Um, a little, what do you say, unsurety about uh, what's tomorrow holding and all that stuff, which happened in the thick of the lockdown. But uh, so, yes, I did find a few days where I thought I can't write and I don't want to write. But then I... I um, got my this thing and um, sorry I went off so yeah I uh, but yes I can sometimes say okay I don't want to write today but the next day I want to write two I have to write two so I have to write two it's like a homework for the kids that if you kill a kid two chapters so I do that Life, life is not as easy for you as an actor as it is for us who are, you know, in, in the journalism sphere or in the radio sphere or TV sphere, you know, because we can still put some software in, in here and do our interviews and just broadcast. But with you, you've got to have your feet on the ground, uh, you know, more often than not. And uh, you, you did say that you've started going back onto the floors. What are the kind of precautions? You know, I'm, I'm seeing on social media, some people have, you know, spraying tunnels, other people have PPE, what kind of gear, uh, you know, just as a social service thing, if you could tell us what kind of gear is being used on the sets that you're going to. I was just, uh, in fact, I've been dubbing for my uh, next projects and also shooting. So I shot for two days, but uh, I was pleasantly surprised. With, uh, there was like a huge uh, medical uh, camp kind of a thing that happened and there were two shoots happening uh, together on, and every shoot had a different uh, kind of a place where they were testing. Uh, they tested your temperatures, they tested um, uh, your the, the oximeter, everything, took your symptoms, fit the form and then once you're inside then you're not coming out. So that I think was really good and there were social distances being maintained, everyone was wearing masks, my entire staff was wearing uh, PPE kits, they were given by the productions and uh, of course everyone was using the sanitizers. I think they really took a lot of care and, and it's a new normal but people are being very very cautious and careful and responsible at work for sure and I'm mighty impressed. But I do hope that we do that as a self-discipline as well, Rishi. You go on the roads and you see people just chilling out, putting their masks down. Um, I don't think that's a cool factor at all. I mean, um, and um, when I take my little nephew for a drive sometimes, I've seen him just call out to a few people and say, Uncle, why don't you wear your mask? I do think people should just, uh, you know, be. I wish we were self-disciplined, most of us. Is there a skill that you picked up in lockdown other than your, your writing, which is already an existing, existing skill, something that you worked upon over these last few months? I tried my hand at cooking. I failed miserably. <laughs> uh, my family was very polite to me for a few, few days and then they said, I think we, we think you should just sit down and let us do what they need. <laughs> what did you try to make? What did you try to make and go horribly wrong? <laughs> See, mom's recipes went fine. The Punjabi recipes, I worked fine. But the others that I tried, because I used to hear from all the friends, Aaj humne ye pasta banaya, aaj humne ye kya. I thought, I'll also try something. So the pizzas burnt and the pastas were a disaster. So I thought, okay, Divya, let it just go. It's, it's not your cup of tea at all. So I, I mean, with a heavy heart, I decided I am not a cook. So, <laughs> so uh, that happened. Then I uh, didn't find really any skills as such. I play a lot of badminton and I really enjoy that. I, um, I have started cycling a lot. That I do uh, a lot and I sketch. And uh, so yeah, I mean, I have a time pass. But, yeah. but cycling must have been nice because of the roads being slightly empty during the lockdown. I go in my building. Oh, if it's good. round and round and round till you fall. <laughs> Is there another character in Hostages season two that you went wow? Just the writing of it or the performance of it, other than Aisha Khan, another character, because they're all such beautifully well defined characters, all of them. Prithvi Singh, for sure. I'm Prithvi Singh, because um, very, uh, what do you say, subtle, very uh, nuanced. And uh, with his silence, you can make out the storm within. And uh, that was like really nice. And I think Ronit is a fabulous actor. He's done it so brilliantly well. Dino has an amazing presence as well. 
all of them. I think they've done such fabulous jobs. Um, Fazihe, Shweta, uh, Shivani. They, they've. I, I think the acting wise, I wouldn't really say anybody was falling short uh, at all. They all did a fab job. But yes, my favorite is Ronit Kapoor. When you do adaptations like this, do you insist on watching the original, or you you know you feel you want to do your own thing? Did you even bother watching the original Israeli series, for example, or you said you know I want my own interpretation of this? I normally don't see the originals, but this one I did because there were too many tracks, and honestly, I thought I don't want to feel lost somewhere. But with sure. the reviews and all that coming in, I was like, I I would have made a stupid decision had I not done this, but. Uh, I did see, and um, the Indian version of it was way far more emotional, uh, layered, and we added a lot to Aisha from the original one. Now we talked of Sudhir, who's the series director, but the director, episodic director, is actually Sachin, isn't Sachin it? Sachin Krishna, yes. Um, to talk to me about what he brought to the table. A lot of it. He is. Uh, he's also the DOP of the show. and uh, so that made it quicker for him because he uh, knew what he wanted to shoot and there was no discussion on the set ki aise angle laga do aisa kar do it was quick um he was very like i had these apprehensions about her being single layered and he said within the because it's a series and you you have to follow everything there so in the given pretext he said uh, uh, we we are going to add layers for you there only and he beautifully did that for me and uh, secondly i think he has a very positive approach uh, any issues any problems he would say don't worry ho jayega and he just didn't mean ho jayega in, in how we say ha ji ho jayega it never happens he actually used to make it happen and i was mighty impressed he used to start sharp if he said 7 am it was 7 am and if the pack up time was 6 he would he would pack you at 5 he was that clear i'm not saying that are phat phat chhodte the isliye acche the he was very clear with what he wanted he knew the tonality of of a scene which is i think a blessing for an actor because half the time you you go about looking for uh, the right ton- tonality uh, to pick up uh, so everyone is on the same page so that he brought to to the thing and i think he's he really added a lot to the series mm-hmm. and and aisha another wonderful trait about her is she doesn't instinctively going for a confrontation she holds back you know as opposed to a lot of raging male hormones you know <laughs> testosterone flying around she's like you know ther ja you know let's see and things like that um are you like that in not in, in your life not at all or you instinct yes <laughs> let's, let's get it done reactive rishi <laughs> <laughs> i do it and then say oh shit man kyu kar diya <laughs> i need a negotiator for myself <laughs> that is such a beautiful thing to say <laughs> <laughs> you know, negotiate over there. That is so cool. <laughs> wonderful. So that just proves what a wonderful actress you are. That means you are nothing like her, and here you are playing this, you know, stoic kind of cool woman, just fabulous. Listen, so this is like what I'd like to be in my life would be somebody like I. <laughs> so yes. Actors live vicariously through other characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice listen conversations with you are so lovely you know thank you for the joy thank you for the joy you give us as an actor you know you just you go out there and you you can make out when you see a uh, a divya dutta performance that she's enjoying herself you know you just you put everything into it and then just makes it so wonderful for us as an audience so take care of yourself and uh, well may your tribe increase <laughs> Thank you Rishi Kela love you <laughs> Love you too cheers bye bye have a good day stay safe bye, bye.